the cube. Look at this. It has cracked one of the 32-foot-high uh, panels in the iconic glass cube at Apple's Fifth Avenue store. Well, it was accidentally broken during the snowstorm. The culprit? Unbelievable. A snowblower operated by the cleanup crew. And get this, the bill to replace it? Oh, yeah, 450 k according to one estimate. To me, the spark of that was that there was something beyond sort of what you see every day. Everything seems to be a mirage. We are in a matrix. What we're seeing is not reality. Everything is being stage managed. Here's how to get out of the matrix. Don't believe anything you read. But there's one more thing. We are combining the power of the Power Mac G4, the awesome power of this machine, with the desktop elegance, the silence, and the miniaturization that we learn from doing the IMAX to make a whole new class of machine. And so, we're starting with the G4 power. We're building in a really fast G4 chip into this new machine. We're building in the ability to have up to 40 gigabytes of storage inside the machine. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, looks like a mid-range Power Mac G4 to me. What's so new and special about this? Well, this is where we get in to the iMac magic. Because if this is the size of a Power Mac G4, we have miniaturized all that power into something this size. Okay? From this to this. And then I got into a way of why have memory for your TV screen and memory for your computer make them one? And that shrunk the chips down, and I shrunk the chips here, and why not take all these timing circuits? I looked through manuals and found a chip that did it in one chip instead of five and reduced that. And one thing after another after another happened. I wound up with so few chips. When I was done, I said, hey, a computer that you can program to generate colored patterns on a screen or data or words or play games or anything. But we needed some money for tooling the case and things like that. We needed, we needed a few hundred thousand dollars. So I went looking for some venture capital. The man Jobs persuaded to part with his cash was Arthur Rock, the man who had originally funded Intel. Well, he uh, wore sandals and he uh, had long, very long hair and uh, beard and mustache. At one time in his life, and it was probably when I first met him, that he ate nothing but fruit. So as a mainline venture capitalist, is this... Is this, this is not the norm. <laughs> this is not the norm. The Apple II was a model of efficient engineering. Here's the floppy disk drive controller, for example. There are eight chips here where previously there would have been 35. And what we've miniaturized it into is an eight-inch cube. An eight-inch cube. Unbelievable. Another way of looking at this is, if this is the Power Mac G4 and you could break it into four equal parts, we have miniaturized all the power into just one of those parts, which is an eight-inch cube. Unbelievable. Now, you can imagine with all this power in such a dense space, we must need a turbo fan to cool this thing. But no, our engineers have done some brilliant work and all this power in an 8-inch cube has cooled without a fan. And so, it runs in virtual silence in an 8-inch cube. And we call this new product the Power Mac G4 Cube, or more affectionately, the G4 Cube. And I would like to show it to you now. Let's bring it out. This is a stunning product, quite possibly the most beautiful product we've ever designed. The computer is in an eight inch cube and it's suspended in a stunning crystal clear enclosure. 
In five years, the PC had gone from a hobbyist toy to an engine that shaped the times we lived in. Thanks to VisiCalc, the Apple II made history. Everybody you talked to just seemed excited about talking about what we were doing. And uh, there was this huge media explosion, kind of like the internet is receiving today, of this is the happening thing. You read about it over and over and over, and every time you took an airplane flight, you read about it. In every newspaper every week, you'd read something about small computers coming, and Apple was one of the highlight companies. So we were being portrayed as a leader of a revolution, and we really felt that we were a leader of a revolution. We were going to change life a lot. Pretty good for a company started in a garage three years before. Our engineers spent an enormous amount of energy figuring out how to get this amazingly powerful G4 technology into this 8-inch cube and to cool it without a fan. But they also spent an enormous amount of time figuring out how to get it out quickly. Because our pro customers like to get at every component in the system within a matter of a few seconds. So here's what we did. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And I think that that same spirit can be put into products and those products can be manufactured and given to people and they can sense that spirit. The Apple I was even less of a computer than the Altair. A single circuit board that came with neither a case nor a keyboard. Still, Steve Jobs managed to sell 50 Apple Ones. Pretty nice. Thank you. So, the G4 Q. It's amazing. Amazing cooling system through a center channel that cools the whole thing with air so that it runs in virtual silence. The G4 Cube. And again, a size comparison with the Power Mac shows how small it really is. We're very, very proud of this. But we didn't stop there. We designed a whole system. 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 But we didn't stop there. But we didn't stop there. But we didn't stop there. We designed a whole system. We designed a whole system. All models are available in early August, just a few weeks away. Power Mac G4 Cube, we are so proud of this thing.